Me represent our investors, uh, the partners from from the North America. Um, basically, uh, if you are going to project, me in Kahinyemo, in Kahinyemo, about two years ago. Uh, every time came back down in the in Chokole and in the Ban, a few just personal. No, any in the months, any in the month before me, I could not. In the case of the Ban, Kahinyemo, and the Adiku Ejeme. Uh, in terms of Boni Blafome and uh, uh, River, okay, the impact they have in, in, in the environment, in terms of uh, the negative ocean impact, maybe Boni and Shaw me the effect they get by and Shaw me can live here. A bad Blafome and our, me a Chono Pony, a young be few UMB can live at this year, Colly Lagoon, me a bad fee in Billy Sandy, Canada. No, in fact, neither of them are the person of their interest. Now, in court, straight away, in committing here, I will lead to make sure that this project is executed the right way. And we in my mind, like Ganyu, we have got James Star. Can you? No, I have played much in that. No, it became a more personal thing to me uh, to be able to ensure that. The Kenyan is an assault of the bar once and for all. No, in small my UAP, the machine, my chief, Pony, a jalem, you do state by state, the approach is more town worker. Some of the benefits, the project near Banya, it brings to the community. Kenyan, well, chief, if you don't mind, please, uh, in brief summary, if you please uh, kind of explain the project, why we are here, the effect. And all the things that we think that the, the community we need to know. Uh, please, uh, yeah. feel free and share. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, David. Uh, my name is Chief uh, Ethel Bat Onoha. Uh, again, we have been here before. We have met with the community people. We have also discussed with them. But uh, I believe that because the Chief Priest was not here on that day, we may need to give you another summary of why we were here and then hear from you so that we can have a consent to work together. So Chief Priest, I greet you. I greet the community. I greet the youth. I greet the women. The purpose why we are here is exactly like what he has said. We are very passionate about the position of the Kole Lago. We believe that uh, it poses some health hazard to people living around here. We also believe that there could be some economic benefit that's supposed to come from that project, from that uh, lagoon to the communities, which they are not getting. And knowing that what drives development is uh, finance, 
We believe that if we can get an investor that will show interest in developing that place into a state-of-the-art city, it will be to the benefit of the community and to the government. And that was why when my partner David came and uh, discussed that with me, I became interested and said it's uh, something that can be done because uh, all of us are in Accra. I'm here now for eight years. As a matter of fact, even though I'm a Nigerian, I cannot be a Ghanaian. So I understand the implication of that place. Each one is passing on that place. It's dirty, it's filthy, and there's nothing anybody can do about it because the problem that makes that place dirty doesn't come only from Accra. It comes from where the river started. So no matter what you do, it will bring the rubbish from there and it will settle at that place. So the project became a very commendable one because of the impact it will have on the life of the people and on the economy of the people. So moving forward, we try to make inquiries about that place. Why is it like that? And we are told that various and subsequent governments have tried to carry out some projects in that place. But in the end, it have not yielded the desired result. So also moving forward, we realize that because of the fact that in development, that's what we call sustainable development. Sustainable development is a development that will benefit the people of today without jeopardizing the future generation also. Because if you develop today, and all of you are happy, and your children cannot benefit from that development, it's not sustainable. And the only way to make development sustainable is to follow the process. So if you don't follow the process, nothing will work. And this process is to ensure that the community people who are the owners of that project, who owns that land, are carried along to understand the importance and the need to develop that project. Because if you do not carry the community along, like we have been saying, that project will not be owned. That project will not be sustained. And if the community refuses the contractor to do any work there, the contract will be stalled. So in most cases, government makes mistakes by trying to impose development on the people. You don't impose development on the people. You facilitate the people to think about their own development. And just like I've been saying, wherever we go, we call this kind of development a bottom-up approach. It involves engaging the communities, dialoguing with them, making them to see need, why that project will be done, and also exposing to them what they stand to benefit if that project is done. And when they now understand it the way you do, they will be seeing it from the way you are seeing it. That's why people can say, oh, now I see. Not that they're not seeing it, but you, are, you have a different opinion, they have a different opinion. They're supposed to come together and rub minds and hear their own views and don't impose their own on them. They will even give you guidance on how that project can be done. And that's why we embark on this community mobilization. To find out the communities that own that place. To dialogue with them to see whether it will be possible for them to agree with us to bring an investor who can develop that place. And lucky enough, most investors have shown interest, but we cannot come in without the consent of the community. So last time we went to the English Alata, that's the name? Yes. We also came to this place and we met with the chiefs, met with the elders, met with the youth and the women. And they told us that, uh, okay, we should go, they will send word to us. So they called us again that uh, we need to speak to the Willowmans, the, the, the chiefs. And that's why we are here today to also let you know that it's the same thing we are saying. We need your consent. We need you to partner with us. Let's carry out this laudable project that will benefit you, your people, the community, and the state. God bless you.
She no need pet now. She only go around. That's why I say. I believe you know God. Do it here, no ebo. She no pop a yog be Baba Oda. That me ebo. Oh, me na me do. Me na chui. You know what I say. Iba ko iba wibi. The same one is an eight nights. Iba nights. No me can na me ni jaji. Oba ya se. No ni ji. I can't make it by me, but I'm making it. Amen. I feel you need to go and come in. All right. Thank you. I got to go. Amen. 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 Ni <laughs> As you met already, we've been here before, and this is the second time we are meeting them. How, uh, what is your general impression of the whole meeting? And what did they tell you? Yeah, well, you know, first and foremost, I, I just want to thank everybody that was here. Uh, I think so far it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, my impression so far is that I have been able to um, get all the response that I need, especially from from the chiefs and the traditional leaders um, of this, this land. Usually, uh, as you all know, Kole Lagoon project has been attempted, as far as I can rem remember, almost for 12, 15 years now. And it's never been able to be successful because of the kind of approach that, in my opinion, government has taken. It appears that the government has not directly involved the people, uh, the original owners of the lands, and hasn't been able to mobilize them to buy into the project. And that's what necessitated this approach. I think that um, the people are beginning to understand the concept and they are yearning uh, to see a change. The place is, 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 is an eyesore. And for the traditional authorities, especially today, having the, the high priest of the Ghana land here, endorsing the project, um, giving absolute support for the project and uh, encouraging the act of unity to ensure that all the clans of Accra, he said he was going to personally call all the, the, the leaders of Accra together and make them have one, one force and one voice to champion the cause of development on the Kone Lagoon project because it's been an eyesore to them and a big shame. I think that's the biggest achievement that we could ever have. Um, listening to some of the things that he said, emphasizing on the fact that uh, because there are so many different kinds of groupings within the Ghana land, it's made development in Ghana become uh, very, very difficult. But he said that he would not allow this opportunity or investment opportunity to slip through their fingers, which means that they see the need for this project, they see the potential of this project, and they also see the economic and environmental impact that this project is going to have for them when it is, it is actually done. Uh, with the investors, I, I think that uh, it's time we start gearing up and uh, mobilizing the necessary funds that is needed to ensure that this project will be successful. Because after um, the people, the indigenous people have thrown their weight behind this, they have a huge expectation. And their expectation is to make sure that we come in and deliver. This project should not be an idea wonder project whereby the corruption and act of indiscipline would destroy the project. Uh, we want to be able to tap into every resources in this country and internationally to ensure that our uh, accountability, probity, and also high integrity with seriousness uh, will be the benchmark 
to ensure that uh, corruption is uh, absolutely eliminated, to ensure that we would not entertain any shoddy kind of way. We want to build some kind of a beautiful new downtown of Accra, uh, self-sufficient power city, whereby even if Akosombo or the other turban is down, that city would light up by itself. We think it's beautiful. We think it's, it's not an impossible tax. It's been done elsewhere in the world. It is not anything that is, 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 is out of this world. We think that if the people or the engineers and the investors and the international community would throw their weight behind this, uh, it will be a monumental um, 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 infrastructure in Ghana. Ghana shouldn't be in the state of, in, in which it is Accra. It should not be in the state in which it is. Um, it, it's about time that the peoples of Accra would also uh, rise up and take up to the tax, ensuring that they are going to entrench themselves into great discipline uh, when it comes to uh, you know, sanitation and, and, and things like that, to ensure that this city is, is changed and will become clean. Uh, you've, been, you've been dialoguing with the custodians of the land for some time. I've been following you. Um, do you have the impression that the documents that you're looking for from these chiefs will be given to you in terms of signing the MOUs for you to get access to the land, for you to start the development? Well, yeah, that's basically uh, the issue of documentation has been the reasons why we chose to uh, this approach of work. We realized that... Um, uh, many uh, uh, times uh, projects are started and halfway or midway the project um, chiefs and land guards and, and there's always been courts, uh, files, uh, injunctions on the projects and, and so on and so forth. We do not want to have that happen for this project. We want this project to have a very smooth sailing from beginning to end. The, um, the owners of the land uh, in our other previous meetings gave us the assurance that yes, they are going to ensure that they would give us every necessary documentation required to ensure that we do not have no problem. Um, they have also ordered us um, and also have informed their lawyers and they are starting putting up MOUs to ensure that we will be able to negotiate you know, on, on very fair terms. We as ICC Canada has, uh, is very much aware you know, of, of the sort of dealings that goes on. And we want to take the, uh, the examples of, 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 of Canada, and Alberta and BC with some of the negotiations between the native lands and, and the nation to bring that kind of ideas here to ensure that uh, there will be a, a fair share of, of, of equity you know, when it comes to uh, shares between the investor community, government and even the local authorities. So yes, I've also been uh, have the privilege to cite some of the documents. Uh, I think uh, uh, la uh, the last week I, I got a chance to cite some of the documents. They are promising to do photocopies of these documents and uh, send them our way. And, and so we are waiting uh, to hear from that. I think our final meetings is going to be a group meeting where all the chiefs across board in the Gamashi district are going to come together, which the Gangulomo has promised to uh, call them to ensemble and get them all to unite for this project. I am looking forward to that. And I think that that is going to be the, the, um, the, 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 the final nail uh, you know, uh, in the coffin uh, of the issue of problems uh, in this Ghana. I think this is going to be a monumental project and it's going to benefit the people and actually become a yard stake moving forward in the projects that is being executed in this country.